Angels are represented throughout the Bible as a body of spiritual beings intermediate between God and men. Psalm 8 says, quote, You have made him, man, a little less than the angels, unquote. The Fourth Lateran Council, 1215, states that angels were created and that men were created after them. Angels are spirits. They do not have physical bodies as we do. The Epistle to the Hebrews says, quote, are they, not all ministering spirits, sent to minister to them who shall receive the inheritance of salvation? Unquote. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. Angels are also attendants at God's throne. Daniel chapter 7 says, quote, Thousands of thousands ministered to him, and ten thousand times a hundred thousand stood before him. Unquote. Angels are also God's messengers. For example, the angel that drew Lot out of Sodom, the angel of the Annunciation, and the angel that announced Christ's birth to the shepherds. Welcome to SD Kaysen Courses. We're covering angels, what they are, and what they do. Let's begin. Firstly, what are angels? According to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, chapters 328 to 330, angels are purely spiritual creatures, meaning they don't have physical bodies like we do. Angels have intelligence and will. They are personal and immortal creatures, surpassing in perfection all visible creatures, as is evidenced by their majesty. It is a matter of faith that these spiritual, non-corporeal beings that sacred scripture typically refers to as angels actually exist. The consistency of tradition and the testimony of scripture are equally clear. Now let's talk about some of their jobs. Attendance at God's throne. In the Bible, angels are primarily depicted as messengers. Their primary duty is to serve as attendants on God's throne in the heavenly court, of which Daniel has provided us with a clear description. Daniel says, quote, I behold till thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days sat. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like clean wool, his throne like flames of fire, the wheels of it like a burning fire. A swift stream of fire issued forth from before him, thousands of thousands ministered to him, and ten thousand times a hundred thousand stood before him. The judgment sat, and the books were opened." Unquote. Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 to 10, and also Psalm 96 verse 7, Psalm 102 verse 20, and Isaiah chapter 6. Job chapter 1 verse 6 and chapter 2 verse 1 both use the word assistance to describe this role of the angelic host, and our Lord refers to it as their perpetual occupation in Matthew chapter 18 verse 10. We are frequently informed of seven angels whose primary mission is to stand before God's throne, Tobit chapter 12 verse 15, Revelation chapter 8 verses 2 to 5. Therefore, it really is clearly evident from the Bible that angels serve primarily as throne attendants. They give God their full attention in whatever he may have planned for them. God's messengers to mankind. Hearing about angels in their heavenly roles beyond our senses is only occasional. The angels of the Bible usually appear as God's messengers to mankind. They communicate God's will to men. In Jacob's vision, they are depicted as ascending and descending the ladder which stretches from earth to heaven. It was an angel who found Agar in the wilderness, Genesis chapter 16. Angels drew Lot out of Sodom. An angel announces to Gideon that he is to save his people. An angel foretells the birth of Samson, Judges chapter 13. And the angel Gabriel instructs Daniel, Daniel chapter 8 verse 16, though he is not called an angel in either of these passages, but the man Gabriel, Daniel chapter 9 verse 21. The same heavenly spirit announced the birth of St. John the Baptist and the incarnation of the Redeemer, while tradition ascribes to him both the message to the shepherds, Luke chapter 2 verse 9, and the most glorious mission of all, that of strengthening Jesus, the King of Angels, in his agony in the garden, Luke chapter 22 verse 43. Such appearances of angels generally last only so long as the delivery of their message requires, but frequently their mission is extended, and they have kept guard for nations during crises. For example, during the Exodus, Exodus chapter 14 verse 19, and Baruch chapter 6 verse 6. Similarly, it is the common view of the church fathers that the prince of the kingdom of the Persians, Daniel chapter 10 verses 13 to 21, is the angel God assigned to spiritually care for that kingdom. Furthermore, Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 8 states, When the Most High divided the nations, when he scattered the children of Adam, he established the bounds of the nations according to the number of the angels of God. 
Angels played a large part, not merely in Hebrew and Christian theology, but in the religious ideas of other nations as well. Personal Guardians Throughout the Bible, we find it repeatedly implied that each individual soul has its own guardian angel. Thus, Abraham, when sending his steward to seek a wife for Isaac, says, quote, He will send his angel before thee, unquote, Genesis chapter 24, verse 7. The words of the 90th Psalm, which the devil quoted to our Lord, Matthew chapter 4, verse 6, are well known, and Judith accounts for her heroic deed by saying, quote, As the Lord liveth, his angel hath been my keeper, unquote, Judith chapter 13, verse 20. These passages, and many like them, though they will not of themselves demonstrate the doctrine, receive their complement in Jesus Christ's words, quote, See that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say to you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father who is in heaven, unquote. Matthew chapter 18, verse 10. Indeed, the book of Tobias seems intended to teach this truth more than any other, and St. Jerome in his commentary on the above words of Jesus Christ says, quote, The dignity of a soul is so great that each has a guardian angel from its birth, unquote. The general doctrine that the angels are our appointed guardians is considered a point of faith, but that each individual member of the human race has his own individual guardian angel is not an article of faith. The view has, however, strong support from the doctors of the church and shouldn't be simply dismissed. The Bible represents the angels not only as our guardians, but also as actually interceding for us. The angel Raphael, Tobit chapter 12 verse 12 says, quote, I offered thy prayer to the Lord, unquote. The Catholic faith teaching on angels is thus thoroughly scriptural. Perhaps the earliest explicit declaration of it is to be found in St. Ambrose's words, quote, We should pray to the angels who are given to us as guardians, unquote. As divine agents governing the world, the fathers had a nearly unanimous belief that the angels carry out God's law in the physical world. The Semitic belief in genii and in spirits that cause good or evil is well known, and traces of it are to be found in the Bible. Thus, the pestilence that devastated Israel for David's sin in numbering the people is attributed to an angel whom David is said to have actually seen, 2 Samuel chapter 24, verses 15 to 17. Even the wind rustling in the treetops was regarded as angelic, 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 23 to 24, and 1 Chronicles chapter 14, verses 14 and 15. This is more explicitly stated with regard to the pool of Probatica, John chapter 5, verses 1 to 4. In that passage, the disturbance of the water is said to be due to the periodic visits of an angel. The Semites clearly felt that all the orderly harmony of the universe and interruptions of that harmony were due to God as their originator, but were carried out by his angels. This view is strongly marked in the Book of Jubilees, where the heavenly host of good and evil angels is ever interfering in the material universe. And that was an overview of angels in a nutshell. They are spiritual beings that do not have physical bodies. They are attendants before God, messengers, guardians, and they govern the world. They do all these things at God's command and for His glory. We should ask angels for help and believe and find solace in the fact that they are constantly working with Christ for our salvation. This has been SD Case and Courses. Until next time, may God bless you forever.